The first lesson is found in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, beginning with verse 6. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his people, his treasured possession. The Lord did not set his affection on you and choose you because you were more numerous than other peoples, for you were the fewest of all peoples. But it was because the Lord loved you and kept the oath he swore to your ancestors that he brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the land of slavery, from the power of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. The word of the Lord. The psalm reading is found in Psalm 16, beginning with verse 1. Please follow the screens. Keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. I say of the holy people who are in the land, they are the noble ones in whom is all my delight. Those who run after other gods will suffer more and more. I will not pour out lib libations of blood to such gods or take up their names on my lips. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night my heart instructs me. Keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful ones see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. The word of the Lord. The second lesson is found in the book of Philippians, chapter 4, beginning with verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The gospel reading is found in the gospel of John chapter 13, beginning with verse 34. Jesus said, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. All right, please be seated. And Lord God, thank you for doing what you've done to us. That if we believe in you, if we are saved, that you, you make us saints. And then, uh, sometimes that's a scary thing to have to live up to. But we know that you're a God of mercy and that you love your children. So help us to be a delight to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So uh, last week of this saints stuff uh, for a little while. Next week, uh, I... Christ the King Sunday, we always look forward to that. And then the season of Advent, you know, he's going to be, the, he's the King of Peace, the King of Love, the King of Joy, uh, the King of Hope. And so ad, we get Advent right around the corner, love it. So, hello saints. 
Does it feel weird to be called a saint? You can say that. Hello, saint. I like it, but it's like, oh, really? You know what I mean? Yeah. But we better, we need to embrace it. We're saints. And that's cool. I mean, God did that, you know? So we need to, we need to enjoy that title and, and live into it. Um, Got to start with these two verses here. Very important to start with these two today. Acts 2.21, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Simple. Romans 10.9, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Uh, I had to start with this, because what I'm talking about today, uh, sometimes our minds get, go legalistic, and I need to be very clear that what I'm talking about today is what happens after you're saved, not how to get saved, all right? How do you get saved? Well, I just, I just told you. All who call all in the name of the Lord. Now, we call on the, why do we call on the name of the Lord, because when we do that, we're saying, you're Lord, you're king and God, like Thomas, my king and my God, right? That's what we're saying, and we need your help. Call on the name of the Lord. We need your help, and we will be saved, because we've called him Lord. I I profess that Jesus is Lord. I I believe in my heart God raised him from the dead. That's saying, I believe that you're the Lord that the Bible said you were because you've made it possible for me to be in a relationship with you forever. There's a lot packed into that, but it's, it's, that's, how we, that's how we're saved. Not by what we do, but by what he did. Not by how hard we work, but because he's faithful and merciful. So that's where we're starting, all right? Because today, what we're talking about today is how we live our lives as saved people. Saints are saved people. We're set apart by, this is what we came up with the last two weeks, okay? We're set apart by God, refined by the Holy Spirit to shine and point the way to Jesus. That's what saints are, okay? That's who we are. That's who y'all are, all right? Now, here's a call to action. I love, from, this is from Deuteronomy 7. I love this call to action because it says so much. There's a lot packed into this. God says this. He's saying this uh, to to Moses to tell Joshua to tell the people. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his people. His uh, treasured possession. Now, there's a lot of people that would say, well, no, this is, God is only talking about the Israelites here. But let's qualify that, all right? If you remember what Summer read, he says this because he says, I've made a love covenant with you. I've made a love covenant with you, so you're mine. I chose you, and I chose you to be my people. And when you be my people, <laughs> I delight in you. Now, remember what Jesus said. Everything in the scriptures, and he was talking about the Old Testament, particularly the Torah, is about me. So, God made a blood covenant with us, a love covenant with us through Jesus Christ. And in Jesus by his life, death, and resurrection, we are adopted into the family of God. And by the way, the cool thing about adoption is you get to choose your kid, right? And so he chooses us, adopts us, and so the same promises that God says here when he says, you're my chosen people, I love you, I made you holy, to be my people in this world, so, and I, I delight in you. 
All right? It's for us. It's for us, too. And so the key here, I, I love the call to action here is, I've made you holy, you're my possession, and I love you to be. To be. To, to be or not to be, that is not the question. To be a saint or not to be the saint, not the question. The question is how? God, you made me a saint. Now how do I get to do that, Right? So we can know you and make you known. That's, that's what a saint does, to know him and make him known. Saints. The reason that it's like, ooh, Karen, I, I like being called that, but it's like, do I really want to be called that? You know, it's tough. Because what saints do, saint, as saints, our impact on the world is amplified. We magnify God. We, 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 tend to, we make things bigger. We become the people in the world that the world is looking for, for hope and truth. So we become a light, the light sometimes, in a very dark room. And if you've ever been in a cave or a pitch dark room and you turn on even the tiniest light, it, you really notice it. It seems huge in the middle of all that darkness. That's what I mean when I say saints magnify. Saints magnify. Our impact on the world is magnified. If our impact on the world is truth and love in Jesus Christ, that's a good thing to magnify, right? We show uh, in whom is God's delight, right? Psalm 16, 3. Before I say that, one thing I have to say, this is really important. We, we magnify. Never forget that in this world, even if people hate you, even for being a Christian, even if they revile you, Jesus said they will, right? You know, even if they think you're a total idiot for believing this foolishness, they will still look to you because you're, you are with the name of Jesus they are still going to look to you to shine, to show what hope is, to show what love is, to show what forgiveness is, to show what kindness and mercy is. Whatever they've heard Jesus is, somehow, some way, even if they think you're a total fool for believing it, they're still going to look to you to shine Jesus. Always remember that. We always magnify it. Whether we, whether we want to or not. Seems like a big responsibility it is. Thank God for forgiveness, you know. Um, but, but the psalmist said this, I say of the holy people who are in the land, now, now this is the king talking, this is not God talking, this is the king talking, I say of the holy people who are in the land, they are the noble ones in whom is all my delight. You, there's, there is no such thing as a secret saint. No such thing as a secret saint. Don't hide it. You know, Jesus said, right? You are the light of the world. You're the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. You can't be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a stand, not only are you a light that is in the world, but you're not a light stuck in the corner on the ground under, you know, on a stand. Soon as you bear the name of Jesus, that's who you are. You're on a stand. You're, you're, you're out in the middle of for everybody to see. Full exposure, right? But that's good. That's good. He says, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. That's, that's like the definition of a saint. I'm a saint, so now what? Now we shine. Well, how do we shine? We have to be careful. We do have to be careful because 
When, we, when saints act like Jesus, we magnify God and we represent him as great ambassadors. But when saints behave like sinners, we amplify. Then our negative impact is also amplified because people are looking at us to shine Jesus and when we don't, they notice that too. I mean, I don't want to, you know, no pressure. And hey, do we all mess up? That, thank God for repentance. Thank God for First John. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's, we shine when we ask for forgiveness. You, know, you can make a mistake and come back from it. It's when we're unrepentant, right? That, and we, when we are unrepentant and rebellious and we call ourselves Christians and then we magnify darkness. And people look at us as Christians and they go, I knew it! Hypocrites, I knew they were all hypocrites. I knew they were all liars. I knew they were just faking it the whole time. No, 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 no. So we, when, we, when we go do wrong, especially when it's to a non-believer, but also to each other, it's so important. Forgiveness. Ask for forgiveness. Ask them and ask God because that shines. That tells people, you know what? He's not perfect. I thought he thought he was better than me. But he's, he's human just like I am. He messed up just like, but somehow he has the power to humble himself and ask me for forgiveness? God uses that. That's a delight to God. So don't sin on purpose, but when it, when it happens. Being a saint is easy at first. You know, if you're a little kid or if you, you, know, even if you uh, become a Christian as an adult, being a saint is easy at first. It's kind of fun. It's exciting. Now I've got this this new light in me, and I, I'm, you know, I'm going to church, and I'm and worshiping, I'm going to Bible studies, and I pray more often, and I do a little Bible verse every day, and we start to kind of get really happy about all the little things we do, and that's good, that's milk. Paul talks about it like milk and meat. But eventually God says, oh, my baby's getting mature. He can walk now, he, he, can, he can help with the chores a little bit, huh? And he gives us responsibility, and that gets a little harder and a little harder and a little harder. There's a reason for that. You know, I use this metaphor a lot, and I always, like, have to be careful because it is people, you talk about a stairway, and they think you're talking about the stairway to heaven. That's not what I'm saying. Salvation, if you believe in the Lord, right, if you call on the name of the Lord. This is about discipleship, Christian maturity, sainthood, right? What we're talking about is sanctif- the process of sanctification. So if you get on a stairway, stairway and each step gets a little taller and a little taller, right? And for a while, you're going, oh, I, I can handle these stairs. I can jog these stairs, right? That's the fun part about being a new believer. And then you get to some of the tougher sta- stairs and you go, ooh, that was hard. I did it. Feeling good about myself. God told me to do that thing and I did it. Woo! And then we get to the stairs that are really hard to climb. And we get over those and we go, I don't know if I want to do that again. I think I want to go back to the smaller stairs and play around down there. Right? You might as well snuff the light out at that point. Because then we're going to get to some stairs. If you, if you go backwards, no shine, right? But if you keep climbing and you get to that step that is so big for you that you there's that it, that no possibility that it's going to happen, that's the test. I skipped a couple of slides there, uh, Debbie, but uh, this is the one... Um, It's when life changes are difficult. It's when life changes are difficult that we learn who our master is. Jesus said, the eye uh, eye (laughs) is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. If your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. 
If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? That's when we're saints, but we amplify, right? That's unhealthy. But Jesus ends it. He says, no one can serve two masters. So the, here's the test, right? You get to that step. You can't climb over it. There's no way you can get past it. That's when, it, it's then, it's when life changes are difficult that we learn who our master is. Because then do I go, I don't even really believe that God, I'm not even thinking about asking God for help, right? I mean, that's, that's me saying, I, you know, I, 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 he's not really my Lord. He's not my master. So I go back, or I just stay there. That's the test, right? So we get to that step, and, and what do we do? I love, uh, this service does a little bit, 8 o'clock does a lot, but when, we, when we're doing the Eucharistic prayer, we sing the, that, uh, the, the, the uh, holy, 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 you know, uh, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. That word Hosanna, and then the people here, Pastor James taught a sermon a long time ago, and he told us what Hosanna means. It means save us now, and so people at that point go, save us now, Right? And, and I love it seeing the hands go up because it's like when Jesus says, you must be like a, one of these little children to enter the kingdom of God. And what does a little child do when he's panicky, when he knows he can't do it? What does he do? He doesn't sit there and just cry if his mom and dad is around and we know he is near, Jesus is near. What does the little baby do? Hold me, help me, pick me up, take me with you. And so we get to that stair and we go... God, I can't do it. I know you want me to do it. I want to do it. Help me. And he picks us up, and he takes us to that next level, and it's pretty much from then on that we realize I'm holding on to your hand because I'd never want to do that without, I never do want to do anything without you ever again. I need you to be Lord of me all the time. That's such a great time in our lives as Christians because it's really hard to go backwards after that. But when we're saints, we shine. We need to shine for Jesus. And I said, you know, we mess up. We all do. Repentance is a massively important part of a saint's life because when we admit that we sin and we ask for forgiveness, we ask Christ to change us, and we move into that change, he'll transform our hearts and minds in him. And then we can shine the true light of Christ. We can shine it even when we mess up. God says, to be my people, to be. How do we be? How do we be saints? Okay, hello, saints. So now, so what now? This is the what now. Paul's great at giving us the what now. Paul says, this is what a saint looks like. And all of these are attributes of Jesus. Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say, say it again. Rejoice. Christians, saints, are supposed to be joyful people. We're not supposed to be crabby, negative downers. Uh, just, I'm not condemning criticism, I'm just saying saints are to be joyful people. Because if, if I'm living my life saying I'm a Christian, I'm a Christ follower, but I'm negative and I'm down all the time and I, I, I give off more smoke and darkness than light, then I'm telling people that God isn't real or if he is real, he isn't powerful or if he is powerful, he isn't love. It's what we're, we're showing people. And honestly, saints rejoice because we're always aware of and grateful for our salvation. If I have nothing else to be happy about, I can be happy that I'm saved, that I'm a blood-bought, redeemed, Holy Spirit-filled, red-hot child of God. Amen? And life is hard sometimes. But God is greater. And I'll tell you the thing about gratitude that is so wonderful Man, you go through some, when Tess had bone cancer, you know, the, when I, you know, problems with the kids, you, problems with the bills, all these kinds of things, it's so easy to get into the funk. But then you, you know, if, if you're paying attention and you're listening to the Lord, he says, did you forget what else I've done? 
And you just put on a, I, I know I don't want to be cliche, but I love it, attitude of gratitude. And start just praising the Lord and giving him thanks for everything that he's done in your life. I, the parents that I had, the childhood I had, the, the, the Bible, the truth, the love of, I mean, on and on and on. My every breath, my kids, my, how could I, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to be joyful now. And it changes you. Gratitude can change a mind. It can change a soul. So gratitude, so important. So rejoice. Paul says, let your gentleness be evident to all the Lord is near. Saints, let their gentleness be known to all because the Lord is near. And here's what I mean by that. Gentleness, it's this, it's this, this is a quality that is extremely important. Gentleness does not mean weakness. Okay, gentleness. And so the opposite of gentleness is important to know. What's the opposite of gentleness? So that we know what not to do, right? The dictionary, I just got this right out of the dictionary. The opposite of gentleness. Rudeness, disrespectfulness, aggressiveness, brutality, crudeness, and vulgarity. That's the opposite of gentleness. So gentleness is actually the qualities of God. Love and mercy and forgiveness and kindness and graciousness and generosity and, and, and <laughs> compassion. That's gentleness. And when we're people that are aggressive, that we're the opposite of gentleness, well, the Lord is near whether we're toots or not. He's near. But if, we, if we're that way, then we're repellent. And so we come walking along and people go, oh boy, there he goes. Oh, oh, oh. That means they're walking away from Jesus too. But when we're gentle, and like I said, gentleness is not weakness. True gentleness has a strength to it. It's like a firm foundation because it's the qualities of God. Gentleness is strength. And so when you're strong, even when you're strong and gentle, even the most traumatized person, even the most wrecked person, the most abused person, will sense the strength of your gentleness. That they can come near you without worrying about being injured without worrying about being hurt or broken, that you're going to say something to destroy them, that you're going to... And, and eventually they will draw near. And if they draw near to you, the Lord is near. And then they'll experience Jesus through you a little bit, but then they'll start to experience Jesus for themselves because he's near, and they will get saved. I believe that. Gentleness is such an important quality of a saint. Do not be anxious about anything. This is the one where I confess, right? But in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. See, saints um, are not to live in an anxiety or worry or fear. Jesus constantly said, do not be afraid, I am with you, okay? What happens when we live in anxiety and, and and jesus disciples they all did we all do at, at times but but this is so important to realize if if i call myself a christian and i believe in the promises of god and and i have no hope that's a bad witness if i'm worried about bills and all that you got to be smart but don't let anxiety or, or worry be your master because we amplify as saints. And we don't want to ever say, God can't do it, because we know he can. So we, are peop we need to be people of hope and confidence. Confidence is also a very, very powerful strength. Confidence. Confidence in Christ and all of his, pow of, of his promises the same resurrection power, Paul says, that, was, that raised Jesus from the dead is in you. Don't be afraid. Our confidence should always bring the hope of Christ to hopeless people. And Paul says, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I think that's very important is that we know that we don't do this alone. 
We don't do it alone. We're in Christ Jesus. And, and we, we, we pray, we praise, we petition. Like Paul says, do, we make all your requests known to God. We do the, but we do it with confidence and hope. And when we do, even when things don't turn out like we think they should, we still have confidence and hope that God's will is done. And if his will is done, then it is good because he is good. He's good? All the time? And Paul says, finally, brothers and sisters, think about such things. And what things? I'll tell you in a second. But we think about these things. Whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. See, if we don't put it into practice, what we do is we stew and we never have peace. We put it into practice. We see God is with us. We have peace. And we, is it true that practice makes perfect? Ah, practice makes progress. But if you're practicing the right things. See, practice doesn't make perfect and practice does, doesn't even make progress if we're practicing bad habits. So Paul says, think on these things and practice these things because these things are Jesus. He says, whatever is, so whatever is true, let's go ahead and skip to whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. These are your good habits. These are the qualities of Jesus. Practice them. Practice them. And what they all really boil down to is the love of Christ. When we do these things, when we practice these things, we amplify these things, then we're living in the love of Christ to be his chosen people, to be. For Jesus, it always, 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 a million times over, boils down to love. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you, you, are also, you also are to love one another. Just as I love you. Now, how did he show his love for us? He gave his life for us. He says in chapter 15, greater, man has, greater love has no man than this, that he would lay down his life for his friends. Love as I have loved, he says. I, you are also to love one another. By this, all people, all people will know. Guess what? You're a light. They're looking. Whether you know it or not, whether you think about it or not, they're looking. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. It starts here. It starts in all of our relationships and our family and our friendships. And then it just circles. Because light shines. If we can see light from stars that are trillions of miles away and may not even exist anymore, how easy it should it be for us to shine for Jesus and expect those rays to just keep going and going and going. Hello, saints, so what now? Now we love like he loves us. How? By being hopeful and gentle and confident chosen people who take on the quality, the attributes of Jesus Christ. We practice those and by this, all people will know that we're saints for Jesus, our Lord. All right? So let's pray for his help, because I know I need it, and probably you do too, all right? So Lord, Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for what you've done for us, that you saved us, that you transform us, that you purify us and refine us, Lord God. Help us to always be light and not darkness, Lord God. Help us to, to know these healthy habits, God, the purity, the righteousness, the truth, the love the mercy, all of these things that you are, Lord God. And it's hard for us, Lord Jesus, when we know we can't do it without you. So I pray that all of us, before we get to that step where, where we want to go backwards, we would just surrender now and, and say, pick us up, Lord. Save us now and take us with you in the direction that you would go. We want to shine for you. We want to amplify you in the best ways, Lord God, so that the whole world will know your love. In Jesus' name, amen.